Hey, and welcome to Journey Church Eva. Our mission here at Journey is to help you discover your real life purpose in Christ so you can make a difference in your world. We would love to hear from you. Check out the show notes for a link to send us an email and a link if you want to give. There's also a link for prayer requests. We have a prayer team that will touch God on your behalf. So send us those prayer requests and let's all watch God move in your life together. You will also find the like, comment, and the subscribe buttons below. Go ahead, hit all three of them. But most importantly, we want you to hit the share button and let's send this message to those of your friends and family that may need some encouragement today. Now, here's today's message. We hope it blesses you, challenges you, and helps you grow stronger in your walk with Jesus. Let's just pray before we go any further. Father, thank you so much for what you are doing, what you will always do, and what you will continue to do through your people in Jesus' name. Say, I am that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this one you're going to have to, this week and probably the next two or three weeks, I am going to need you to wear what we call your big boy britches, okay? Because we're going to have to deal with some issues that's real here and in the church, in general. Are y'all okay? Now, how many know that, again, I titled this message, COVID-19, The Side Effects. Now, I will not be making light of COVID-19, okay? Uh, I, I have a real good close friend of mine who had it in Decatur, a good pastor friend of mine. I mean, it took him down really hard. I mean, put him in the hospital several days, ICU. He's out now, and, and this cat's in phenomenal shape, works out every day, great, and a fireball man of God, filled with the Spirit of God. And I mean, it took him down hard. He's at home now. He's recovering at home. He's having to learn how to speak again get his lung capacity back right. He's only allowed to say like five words a day. And for him, he would say about five to 10,000 words a day, just a fireball for the Lord. And, and so we continue to say, so, it, so it's real. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, the, the success su survival rate is still around 98% of the people don't die from this, okay? And, and thank the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But how many know this thing, because of the way it's come in and we had to shut down things, went into total close down, this has devastated our nation in many different ways. It's devastated our nation physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually. I mean, it, it was just, it's been devastating and a lot of people don't know how to deal with this thing, okay? So when they say you've got COVID-19, you can be asymptomatic and not even run a fever. You can just have the virus be a carrier sometimes. Other times, it attacks your system. Some people, you know, especially if you've got a pre-existing condition, it can really put you in a bad way. And then some people, like my friend, the picture of health and eating healthy, can, it just hit him hard. I mean, he was one of the, in the 1% statistics that it really messed him up that bad, okay? But it's not just about getting a fever. It's not just about having respiratory problems. There's some side effects of this that are devastating our country, you, me, and this nation, and our churches. I want to read you a few statistics right out of the gate. Amen? Well, before I do that, I do want to talk, and I think all of y'all know this. When this thing first broke out back in January, February, and it really, we knew it was here on our soil, and we were fixing to have to shut everything down, and didn't know that, the, you know, they're predicting two plus, two, over two million people are going to die from this, minimum. Everybody was looking to see what Jesus needed. What can we do? What can we need Jesus for? Jesus... And the uptick of, of people seeking websites and going online and watching services went out the roof for all churches that were available to be on service. Ours went to over 3,000 viewers in, the, in two weeks in a row. We had 3,000 plus viewers. But it's, and just like 9-11, after 9-11, the churches became full. Man, are we going to go to war? Are they fixing to invade our country? We need Jesus. Ran to the church, man, in the church after about... Six weeks after 9-11, those same people that ran there crying out to Jesus ran right back out and said, we don't need Jesus. Looks like we're going to be okay. And we're seeing the same thing with this COVID. Now, they weren't able to run to churches because churches physically couldn't be open. But we were open online, and online just shot out the roof, and people were, oh, Jesus is, and where is it? Oh, we get, get, get. And then when it seemed like, you know, the success rate or the, the, the death rate was only going to be around 1.5% to 2% of all people that got it were going to pass away. And again, that's too, still too many. Not making light of it. But when people are like, well, is, is, is something I probably can survive pretty good? 
especially younger people, well, we don't need Jesus no more. We just don't need Jesus no more. Latest statistics. Now, most of these statistics are going to be from like January through June because a lot of times you don't want to do statistics two or three times a year. So these are, some of these will be more than what it is. But as of right now, one-third, everybody say one-third, around 33%, a little more right now, but one-third of the active church people have not come back to church and have pretty much made up their mind they're not coming back to church. So we have lost statistically one-third of the church in America. That only leaves two-thirds, guys. And they're sometimes wishy-washy at best. But one-third of regularly attending church people have not came back to church and said, as verbally said in a poll, they were asked, probably won't be going back. Just got out of habit. Church. Now, we're not talking lost people, guys. We're talking about active church people. Okay? As of June 2020, again, this is June of this year because they don't have nothing. Their new one will come out probably in September, or excuse me, in November, December. As of 2020, the CDC, the Center for Disease, reports show that 40.9 of all adults inside the U.S. say they have had their mental health effective, affected, including symptoms of anxiety and depression during the pandemic. So in other words, almost half of America has said, I'm under anxiety and depression because of this COVID. Does that not scare some of y'all? And, and Christians are included in this. This is half of all people walking around today will say they are experiencing some kind of mental anguish because of COVID. What are we going to do? I can't get down and get my cheeseburger like I like it. Now, here's the thing about it. 49% say they suffered from it. But from 2015 to 2019, before the pandemic hit, there was actually a 12.1 decline in the use of anxiety and depression, America, uh, depression of medicine in America, and that's the first time it's ever been in decline. It had always climbed, 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 but around 2015 to 2019, we were at a 12% decline in people not needing it, coming off their medicine. They can cope with life now because there was a surge, it's a little bit of surge in the foundations of the churches back in those days. Y'all okay? Now, got more for you. Now, now look at the numbers. One third of the church, 40% of the people say they were, they're, they're suffering from some kind of mental illness. Now we have 12%. We were on a 12% decline. Now we're on a 40% increase. And this is just through June. It's way higher now, by the way. Can't give you an official, but the unofficial results are now probably around 56 to 57% of people are seeking out some kind of help for, for anxiety and fear. Now let me give you these numbers as of... As of but th these numbers are between mid-February to mid-March. So just a month span here. February to March of 2020... Anxiety and depression prescriptions rose by 34%. Are y'all paying attention? 34% of Americans said, I got to have some medicine for this. The divorce rate. The divorce rate inside of America, the number of people looking for divorces during this same pandemic period has risen to 34% higher from March through June of 2020 compared to 2019. So we've got a 34, and I knew this was going to happen because when you shut people up, they either going to really be in love, they going to get, can't stand each other and get divorced, or they going to kill each other. All right? So 34% rise since COVID has effect in divorce. Now here's something fairly shocking that I wasn't prepared to read when I read these statistics. States along the Bible Belt. Y'all know what the Bible Belt is, right? Part of Texas, Arkansas, coming down into Tennessee, Georgia, or, or uh, Mississippi, coming across the Tennessee Valley, Alabama, Georgia, sweeping up into the Carolinas. That's called the Bible Belt. The belt buckle is between Arkansas and Georgia and Alabama being right in the center where you would hook the belt. This is, and then the Bible Belt is where the gospel is preached the most, and people say that they are more religious and connected to Christ in this area of our country than any other area in the United States. We live in the center of the Bible Belt. Thank you, Jesus. Until you hear this. 
States along the Bible Belt recorded the highest number of divorce rate during COVID-19 pandemic, including the leaders, Arkansas and Alabama. So right here in the middle of where we say, hey, we trust God. We love God. We're all about Jesus and his word. Man, when the first little thing comes along, oh, we can't stand each other. I don't know what I'm going to do. I need medicine. I need this. I I don't want to be at home with my family all day. I'm out. I'm out. You ain't got the fever. You ain't got a symptom one of COVID-19 having a hold of your body, but you got the side effects that the devil's plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. And with your agreement in a world, in a spiritual world that you're not used to dealing with, you are bowing down at the feet of Satan and his plan for your life, your family, your church, your community, even your nation, and you're just bowing down. So I want to ask you today, what kind of faith do you really have? Amen? Amen? So your first note that's going to pop up on the screen when this is replayed is going to be this right here. This is the side effect of COVID-19. It's not the, not the disease, not the affliction, not the pandemic, but here's the side effect of COVID-19. And it is that it is absolutely exposing the faith that we say we really have. It's exposing it, folks. Because we're taking people who say they are of a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God is supreme, and the first little thing that comes along, we panic, we fall apart, we give up. Oh, me, i got to quit everything and just stay in my little house. Except when I want to go to Walmart, or except when I want to go to my friend's house, or except for me going to the job. Let me tell you something. If church is the only thing you are staying at home from, you are doing it wrong, folks. If you can go to everything else, but you can't make it to the house of God, you ain't got faith. Not the faith that you proclaim you have anyway. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you today, the church's faith is being exposed right now. The Bible, and I don't got time to go here, this is for another time, but the Bible says there's coming a day, even on the earthly realm, where God says, I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. Amen? Now, both of them sound alike. They both go, bah. They sound alike, and from a distance, only a professional can know, but at a distance, it all sounds like a sheep or a goat. We don't know. But are you a sheep this morning, or are you really a goat? What faith do you really have this morning? I don't care how old you are in here. If you're old enough to hear my voice, you're old enough to understand this message today is for all of us. So the question becomes, what kind of faith is operating in our churches? What kind of faith would you say today is operating in the church? Is the church getting stronger through this? There are pockets where it's happening, but very few. Overall, the church is reclined and declined in this. One third of the people said they're not coming back. Not coming back. Just done with church. Oh, but, we, oh, but I love Jesus. But I, but I love Jesus. And I want Jesus' his hand of protection. I want him to... I want Jesus to protect me and my house, but I'm no longer going to go to his house. Jesus, do what I want, but don't ask me to do what you want. That's the kind of faith a lot of people are operating in today. And I'm not here to get on nobody, okay? But my God, the truth's the truth. So what kind of faith does the church have? Let me tell you what kind of faith the church has. The faith has the same exact faith that you have. Because, friends, this building ain't the church. This property ain't the church. You, my friend, you, me, the person's over here, the person sitting here, the person, we make up this church. So I got a question for you today. What kind of faith does Journey Church have? Look around and you'll see. There's more empty chairs than there are people with butts in them. Oh, I'm coming to preach today. I don't know what you came to hear. Hmm. What kind of church, what kind of faith does a church have? The church has the faith of the people because the people are the church. You're the church. You are the faith. And, and I remember the old stories about like this. And I remember hearing an evangelist preach it. No, and I'm going to use it just a little bit here. What if everybody had your faith in this church? What kind of church would we be? Would anybody be showing up Saturday, this coming Saturday to work? Or would it be the faith not be there? When people get sick, do we just fall apart or would we pray? Would people be excited about worship when it comes time to worship? Would there even be a worship service if we had your faith? 
Would there be anything with the preached word of God responding to it and actually activating it and honoring the word that's preached? Or would it just be a kind of a social gathering where we go punch our clock and go home? And then, let me tell you something. We're going through an awesome teaching on Wednesday nights called Undercover, being under the cover of the authority of God and how to honor that and how to walk in it and how to produce it. But you know what? When people don't know how to honor and respect the word of God, we get the faith that the churches are operating in right now. Whew. So I got a new term for you the Holy Ghost gave me the other night. You may want to write this down. So I'm praying, I'm asking God, well, God, what kind of faith does a church, is the church got right now? And don't get me wrong, again, there, there are some pockets, and we're hopefully one of those pockets, that we're rising up in faith. And we're not, we're not being depressed, and we're not going into oppression and anxiety and fear, but we're rising up in faith. Well, maybe not. But here's what the Lord spoke to. Here's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me when I was praying about this. I wrote it down. He said, right now, in most of my churches, there exists something called Christian emotional faith. Christian emotional faith. Christian emotional faith. Everybody say emotional faith. What is emotional, Christian emotional faith? It is your faith based upon your emotions. And your emotions will sway based on circumstances. Therefore, you have a faith that will sway to whatever your emotions are that day. If you had a good day and you've seen some, maybe some positive results, yay, Jesus. If you had a bad day and things didn't go your way, well, I'm not going back to church or I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to pray. My faith is dependent upon my emotions and my circumstances. And my friends, let me tell you something. And, and I know when I hear God and I know when it's kind of maybe just me thinking, when I hear God say that, I'm telling you, God spoke that. That his church is slipping into emotional faith. And that's why I had such an urgency to preach that to you today. Because if you don't know what's going on in the spirit realm, and you haven't been praying, and you haven't been seeking God, then my God, you need to hear it from somebody who has. But here's the thing about it. Even when you hear it, you've got a responsibility to respond to it. Are you going to continue to walk with your emotional faith? Or are you going to go back to God-based Bible faith? And let it rise up in you and have some, some fortinal testitude inside you to stand up and be a man or woman and be a man or woman of God in these times. Or are you just going to shriek back with the religious section of the Bible that says, <laughs> whatever. Whew. Faith based on your emotions. You know, Jesus Christ had to deal with the people like this. But you would think when Jesus dealt with it and he wrote it in his word to show us that people of faith can have and operate just out of their emotions and the destruction that it brings. But yet when he comes in and brings a word, if they respond right, they don't walk in that and they get the results of being real faith people. You would think because we have example after example in the Bible that Christians would know better than to start operating in circumstantial emotional faith. But have we? Whew. Let me show you how Jesus dealt with it. <laughs> and real quickly, I ain't got time to read it, but I'm going to be putting up just a minute. It'll be in Matthew chapter 8. But here it is, Jesus. Y'all y'all very familiar with the story. Jesus says he's preached, finished, finished preaching. He's got an assignment across the lake, ocean, whatever you want to call it, body of water. He says, let's get into the boat, and we're going to the other side. And you've heard me preach this. When Jesus says, get in the boat and go on to the other side, my friend, you will make it if Jesus says you're going to the other side. There ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. You should have took that at face value. He didn't say, now you're going to make it on, on, on easy sailing. You're going to make it with a spring a leak. You may spring a leak. You may run into a storm. But when Jesus says you're going to make it, you're going to make it. That settles it. Real faith says it don't matter what looks like it's going to happen. Jesus said... The word said, the living word of God in flesh on earth has spoken and it's finished. He said we're going to the other side. But you know the story, they, they cast off, they got to the other side, man. Jesus wore out, he'd been preaching all day, man. He gets up in the front of the boat, gets his pillows just like he likes it, got his my pillow. Got his my pillow on his my blanket or whatever. And man, he sat down and he began to snooze, baby. He's catching some well-needed rest, as he should, amen? He was in flesh. He, he got tired, okay? But they all know, the Bible says, a bad storm rose, and the waves begin to crash over into the boat. And, and guess what? These great men of God who's traveling with Jesus, who's at his right-hand side, seeing miracles, they're doing some of the miracles themselves. They, they got the first sign of a little bit of problem. Oh, there's a storm. Oh, my goodness, there's some waves hitting our boat. I know Jesus says we're going, but it doesn't look like things are going to go smooth. What are we going to do? 
I know. Let's take the man who's been up preaching the word and, and, and praying and, and laboring in the wild. Let's go wake him up. And they went and woke Jesus up. Jesus, you've got to do something. And that's what we saw in the beginning of this. Oh, come on. Let's get to Jesus, man. Jesus, you've got to do something. And when they don't look like Jesus is going to do it their way, just the heck with Jesus then. Heck with church, man. I'll do my own thing. So anyway, here, let's pick up reading. Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 8, verse 25 and 26 says this. Then his disciples came to him, and they woke him up saying, <laughs> I love this, Lord, save us. Look where, the, look where everything's about, us, Lord. It's not Lord. We're, we got an assignment to get to, Lord. Make sure this assignment, there's people lost that need to hear your word over there. Lord, our main concern is that we make it over there where they can hear about Jesus. No, that wasn't a concern, was it? The concern was, save me. I look like I'm in danger. <laughs> save me. Save us, Lord. We're perishing. <laughs> That's a bold-faced lie. They wasn't perishing. They were with Jesus. Jesus had said, you're going to make it on the other side. They with Jesus. But yet they think they died with Jesus. Somebody say, help them, Lord. <laughs> but look what he said to them. He said, oh, okay, 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 I see that. Y'all a little upset, I know. Here, let me help you. No, he didn't say that. Verse 26 says, but he said to them, Jesus' words, why are you, say it with me, fearful. So he goes right to the emotions they're dealing with. They're afraid. They're not afraid of missing the assignment. They're, modern day, they're not afraid of missing the service. They're afraid for themselves. Mm. They're afraid for their own, own stuff. Why are you fearful, O oh, you of little faith? Then he rose, rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm. They should have never woke the band up. They should have stepped up to the front of that boat. Somebody said, you know what? My faith ain't going to shrink back. My emotions ain't going to take over. Look here, Storm. I got Jesus in the boat. And Jesus has declared we're going to the other side. So you can either get calm or we're going to ride a wave all the way over there. But we're going to make it. But when your eyes ain't on something besides yourself, when your eyes are on yourself and what you're, you think you're going to suffer through and what, you, what could possibly happen to you, then you're going to be all about you. And you're going to operate your faith out of your emotions. This is exactly what he was having to deal with here. He addressed their emotion. Why are you fearful? You're letting your emotion get in the way of the faith. You should have rebuked the storm, not me. I'm in the boat. I need a nap here. <laughs> I just like to say it like this. The, Jesus, the disciples had Jesus with them. You and I have Jesus in us. In us. Where I walk, Jesus walks. Where I go, Jesus goes. When I get there, he's there with me. When I leave, he, he's with me. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when I hear the word pandemic, I don't have to panic. When I hear the word shut down, I go, we'll just see. Well, you're just being cocky. No, I'm not being cocky at all. I'm just saying I'd rather believe God than to believe anything else. They were acting out of fear. Now, it just calls out fear, but you can't have fear without attaching some stress and some anxiety to it. You, matter of fact, you can't even get to fear without stress and anxiety. Amen? You got to go through them to get to full-blown fear. Are you with me? Now, see, what's, what's beginning to happen now? This is another thing the Lord, I mean, he's been, we've been talking a lot lately. But one of the things that's happening right now is we're, we've entered a season to where it's disturbed our little nest egg. It's disturbed the way we like our pillow and our bed sheets fluffed. It's disturbed our everyday goings. And we don't like for anything to come in and disturb us while we're doing our day. And when it does and we can't control it, then where's the faith? And we shrink back and we got all these 
Is Jesus even real? Is any of this making a difference? What about this? And you let your mind, you let the devil creep into your mind and run all these, these doubts and fears just like Eve did in the garden. He don't want you to have this because he don't want you to do this. He don't want you to have this. He's holding things back from you and he's not real enough to do this for you and, and you need to eat the apple. That way you'll know. And my friends, let me tell you something. I believe if there was an apple today put before you that said you can surrender your life to Satan or you can get through this, I believe half the Christians would eat the apple just to have self-absorbed stuff. I really believe that. I believe half, oh, probably more than half would eat the apple. Oh, if this will give me a quick fix and get me through this, give me the apple. Just give me some, give me some temporary monetary pleasure and, and peace where I can, when you've got Jesus. Not in a boat, alive, living on the inside of every born-again believer of Jesus Christ, if you say amen to that. But see, what we're, what we're being tempted with now is this, this COVID is exposing our faith, and if all you've ever really, truly operated in in church is emotional, circumstantial faith, then now your faith is that, that emotion and our circumstances have changed, and now your emotions are being run, and now it's testing your faith. Because, see, you're not dealing with something that you can deal with in your own ability. We are now dealing with something that is of the supernatural, demonic realm. Because all sickness is from the enemy. And you, you can't control it by going down to the doctor and getting something right now. You're going to have to depend on Dr. Jesus. To not get it, you're going to have to walk and declare you ain't going to get it. But you can't stand up and to say, I declare I will not receive this into my house, says the Lord. I declare, Psalm 91, that no pandemic shall come nigh into my house. I declare in the name of Jesus that I would above all things that God wants me to prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers. You know why you won't say that? Because you've got emotional faith and you think, well, if I say that, I'm tempting the devil. Say it, tempt him. You've got a big God. It says you now shall not tempt. If the Bible doesn't say you shall not tempt the devil. It says you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And it's not a temptation when you're declaring the word of God. It's not cocky when you declare the word of God. It's not anything but just saying Jesus is Lord of my life. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to walk in depression. I'm not going to be walking in anxious and anxiety. Why? Because the Bible tells me not to. And for me to do that is me going against the word of God as a man or woman of God. So see, we're dealing with something in the demonic spiritual realm now. And oh, bless God, the church doesn't believe in it. The church hasn't been taught in it. The church don't want to fool with that. That's why we're in such anxiety and fear. If I can't control this in my flesh, then oh my God, I don't have enough spirit to control it in the spiritual realm. That's why you better start tapping into what the Bible calls the Holy Ghost. That's why it's very important that when you don't know how to pray about COVID-19, that you have a language of the Father that you can pray through you, to you and through you, where you can pray against this thing in, the, in what's called the prayer language of heaven, speaking in tongues, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. But when over 80-something percent of the church doesn't know about the Spirit of God, doesn't have a language they can pray in other than English, then what do you expect to happen? But we don't want to know about that stuff because that's going to get me out of my religious comfort zone. Whew, I'm telling you, I don't want to get out of my religious comfort zone. I like my religion to where if I want to go to church, if I decide to get up Sunday and ain't nothing else going on, that me and my family can tool on up to church, punch in the clock, sit on the third, fourth row, the back row, wherever, hear a sweet little sermonette, feel good about myself, get up and hit the door and live like hell till next Sunday. That's the way I like my Jesus. But now you run into something that don't bow down to your religious organization. It'll only bow down at the supernatural name of Jesus. But if your faith is based on emotions and your emotions are swinging left to right, well, bless your heart. Now let me get to what I really want to preach. I got to have a drink of water. Y'all okay? I want you to look at this. I got to go. Mark chapter 9. We're going to take 14 through 20, and we're going to take a little bit of time to go through it this morning. Touch your neighbor and say, you need to get this. Now, Jesus, his disciples were gathered up. He is over here. He's fixing it. He had been doing some other things, and his disciples were over here. And he comes walking down the, the cart path, as so they say, and he looks up, and he sees a big hootenanny going on. 
He's not sure what's going on, but I'm sure he's Jesus. He can discern it. Ain't that great? Something's shaking the people. Something has shaken the disciples. And something's even shaken some of the religious high ups were there. And when I say religious high ups, it was scribes. And scribes were not just religious people. They were also political people. Okay, there were political, there were religious leaders who held a political office through the religion. So here we have the common people, the, the church of faith, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ there, and we have the political and religious leaders all gathered up, and something has stirred them up. Could have been a pandemic, could have been a mass murder, could have been something, but it's something out of the, out of the ordinary, because all of them's there, just it's all yakking. Kind of like what's going on right now. All of America's pandemic, presidential election, all this, all that, healthcare this, everybody stirred up by the plan of the enemy, even the church. So let's pick up this story in chapter 9 of Mark, the 14th verse. Now watch this. Now I'm reading this out of the New King James. One of the reasons I like this translation during this is because I really want to point out to you anywhere it refers to the triune God or the any part of the Godhead, it capitalizes the deity. So, and when capital he, that is Jesus, okay? So when Jesus, when he, Jesus, came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. So, man, it's on, man. What's going on here? Why are you doing it this way? <laughs> so everybody say something big was going on. Something big going on. Here rolls Jesus up. Now watch this. When Jesus gets on the scene, next verse, verse 15, immediately when they saw capital him, Jesus, all the people were greatly amazed and run to capital him, Jesus, to greet capital him, Jesus. So all this, the church is there, the, the, the leaders of the church are there, but when Jesus shows up, now we got somebody. Just like we run to him. Oh, so we run to Jesus. Everybody say, run to Jesus. Next verse. And when he, Jesus, asked the scribes. I thought that was kind of funny. He didn't go straight to the disciples. He went to the scribes. Okay, you religious folks, what do y'all got going on? You say you're faithful. You say you're men of faith. And you got the word and you are teachers of the law and the word and men of faith. Hey, you men of faith, what's going on? He didn't address the disciples. I love that. Okay. What are you discussing with them, talking about his disciples? What are, you, what are you pounding on my disciples for, man? What are you hacking on them about? Now watch what happens next. Verse 17 says, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. This is a demonic spirit. So we got a son who is demon-possessed. Everybody say demon-possessed. Demon with an affliction. Hallelujah. There you go. Next verse. That's still the same guy talking to Jesus here. And whenever this demon seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, ganashes his teeth. That's the way I say it because that's the way it's written. Ganashes. I don't have gnats. I have ganats. Okay? Just a preference, okay? It throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth. He gnashes his teeth, and he becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples. I went to your church, God. I rode up Sunday at your church where the body of faith was, God, because I had a problem that I felt like only faithful people could handle. So I took the boy. We went to church where your disciples are at, God, Jesus. <laughs> so I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, <laughs> but they couldn't. I'll leave that up there for a minute. There was a whole lot of people came to church for a few weeks. Now, listen to me now. This is an indictment against the whole church as a whole. When people come seeking Jesus and they can't even find him in the church. When people come into this door and they can't find somebody, they'll say, man, we're glad to have you. So glad to have you. Oh, no, I'm just coming for, for me to set in service. I ain't coming to greet you. I'm coming to get mine. I'm not, I'm not going to make it where you can get yours. I just want to come in here, hear what they got to do and go where I can feel good about myself. When they can't come in and find representatives of the power of Jesus' love, his name, his anointing, and they said, we went to the church who said they were, but we didn't see a lick of Jesus. We didn't feel no Jesus up in there. They sang some songs. Preacher spit to the third row. 
and we didn't feel Jesus, we didn't see Jesus, and we don't even think we heard Jesus in that church, then they're done with church. Turn your name and say, God help us. I brought my son who's demon possessed and it does all this stuff. See, now look at this. Let's take this into today's time. Lord, we come to you right now. And this pandemic's just throwing us around. It's foaming at the mouth. It's growling its teeth at us. It shut us down. It shut us up. Um, I don't know what my 401k is going to be. I don't know if I'm going to have this. I don't know if I'm going to have that. Oh, God, I don't even want to go to church anymore. Because your church can't do nothing anyway. Am I preaching too hard? Are y'all okay? Now, it says they could not. <laughs> Now, I cannot, let me just time out here. I cannot prove this scripturally. I cannot say this is solid doctrine. But this is, and I'm not saying this is the Holy Ghost spoke to me like I did a while ago, okay? Y'all, y'all understand it. This is just more one of these gut feelings I have. But I can't stand on you and tell you this is the absolute truth, okay? Because it's not in the Bible. Y'all understand that, right? But here's what I felt. And I even asked God to confirm it, but God was silent, so I don't know if it's truth or not. But I'm going to tell you what I felt. I felt like it was another case to where they might could have, they just didn't want to because they'd never seen nothing do this. They were out of their element with Jesus. They were afraid because when, when somebody goes up to you and says, here, deal with this, and this thing is flopping around like a dead fish and he's getting real rigid and his eyes are bulging out and foaming out the mouth and his teeth are grinding, how many of you would say, oh, yeah, I got that, no problem. Now, seriously, what would you do if that happened? If somebody come up here and started displaying that right here? I can tell you what, 90%, probably 99% of you do it here. Preacher, you need to do something. It's yours. There you go. You're on the stage. You got the mic. This is yours. And then you want to sit there and watch. Now, some of you just hit the door automatically. That just scared the hell right out of you. But for those that have a curious mind and just want to see, y'all stay and see what's going to happen. But if I told you, anyone in who here who doesn't have the faith to cast this thing out, it's going to come on you. If you don't, you better get in your faith right now and stay with me. How many people would be left in here? And I'm telling you, if you didn't hear what I preached a few weeks ago in Matthew 24, you better get you some faith that will sustain you because you're fixing to have to deal with some stuff if you live long enough till Jesus comes back that this pandemic is going to look like Sunday school. Why do I know that? Because the Bible says so, folks. Well, we're, we would done be out of here. I'm premillennial. Well, where are you at right now? <laughs> you still here, ain't you? A lot of people thought we'd done be gone for this thing. But bless God, we're still here. I don't know how much longer we're going to be here. I don't know if he's coming back tomorrow. He could. It could be another thousand. I don't know. I just want to live in the power of the anointing of God while I'm here. And I want to get as many people to come along and get in the power of God where when these things do come up, we sit there and rebuke it. We don't run from it. We don't let it get us in fear and all tore up from the floor up. Woo! Couldn't or wouldn't. Again, they'd never seen anything like this before without Jesus being right there. And I'm telling you, we ain't seen anything like what we're seeing right now in our lifetime. Now, we know there was a Spanish flu in the early 19th century that wiped out much more than this. And, and from what I understand, society made it because you and I are still here. So something worse has happened. But you know what? It ain't happened to us. And therein lies the problem. Our faith has never been tested. We got the easiest faith of any country on the planet Earth because it, it doesn't get tested. And I got news for you. If you think this is a big test, you in big trouble. You, let me tell you something. You better go double your prescription. You better get an intravenous drop. Amen? <laughs> now watch the next verse. So he, here's all this. The disciples couldn't do it. The church couldn't do it. And so here's Jesus' response. He answered and said to them, O faithless generation. Here we go again. One word. Faithless. Now there was some type of faith there. The disciples were there. But they couldn't do it. They have some type of faith. You know what they had? They had emotional faith. Up until that point, they had emotional faith. Oh, faithless generation. Dad Gummit. He probably didn't say Dad Gummit. He went from the South. But 
Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here. In other words, this is something you ought to not even have to bother me with. I've told you I've imparted my power to you. I've given you my name to use. You represent me. And now you got to bring everything to me. Can you imagine right now Jesus looking at the church and the shape it's in over this pandemic? One third of my church ain't even coming back because a 98% survival rate virus has come through America. Can I give you a, a, another statistics? I don't have the exact number, but I know it's, it's somewhere in there. More people died from the regular flu last year than have died from COVID-19 this year. And it was okay. Nobody said a word. Whew. It's amazing to me. Jesus is looking down at the church, and he sees... Now, these people are professing that I am their Lord, I'm their Savior, and there's a, there's a small number of them professing they've been baptized in my spirit, can speak my heavenly language, full of God's power, full of faith, men and women. Oh, hallelujah! Get to church and throw a little huck a buck and shout all the way across the floors and get my hairpins bobbing and going and doing the chicken walk and all that good stuff and get their emotions revved up on Sunday and then going out Monday and drawing up like a little child and bowing down to the world. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let me get my pills. Well, that ain't popular preaching, Pastor, but I don't care. I ain't into being popular. Y'all okay? Jesus is looking and finding a church that is as full of anxiety, fear, doubt, oppression, and depression as the lost demonic spirits are controlling everybody. Ain't even, they lost as a goose, and we acting just like them. Because that's exactly what his disciples and that bunch was doing. Walked into them, here's a demon-possessed boy. They should have just grabbed him up, laid hands on him, and rebuked it in the name of Jesus, and the boy would have been healed. But no, we're not sure what's going on. This thing looks mean. This thing looks like it can kill us. Whew. Let's go. Verse 20. Then they brought him, talking about the boy, the demon-possessed boy, to capital him, Jesus. And when he, the boy, saw him, Jesus... <laughs> Look at the time frame there. How fast did it happen? Bam! Immediately, the, now watch what the Spirit done. The Spirit convulsed, fell on the ground, watered around like a snake, and started foaming at the mouth. What's that about? That is about any time you don't go to confront this demonic spirit of the enemy, He's going to try to look and act mean and ugly and try to get you to operate in fear. This thing was trying to get literally the Son of God to operate in the same spirit his disciples, his church, and the religious and political leaders were operating in. Where Jesus couldn't do it either. But I mean, oh, Jesus, don't play that. Amen? Amen? And that's what, this, that's what this virus is doing. I mean, you turn on the news and you're going to die. They done telling you. Unless you vote this way or that way, you're going to die. And if you don't do this, you're going to die. And if you don't wear a mask, you're going to die. And if you don't do this, you're going to die. And that's all you see is about how horrible it is and how deadly it is. And Oh, this, is, this state's had a huge rise. And this, oh my goodness. And you're so absorbed into that nonsense. Are you ready? So they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed and did all of his, did all of his Hollywood theatrical newscast to try to get Jesus to be fearful, to try to get Jesus to be in stress, and anxiety. Oh, what am I going to do with this? I don't know what to do. I mean, oh, again, Jesus, that's just not how he operates. I'm going to skip down to verse 25, just for sake of time. In verse 25 through 27, and Jesus saw the people come running together, and I love that part. People's gathering up to see what's going to happen. Just like COVID when it first broke out. Everybody's going to gather up at the church to see what's going to happen. And when it looks like we can survive, we don't need Jesus no more. We're just, we just here to watch the house burn. You know what I'm talking about? House on fire. What do people do? Go out and see it. Your neighbor, you don't ever visit your neighbor. You don't ever do nothing. But if a house catch on fire, you're going to get up and drive down the road where you just see the destruction. We'll see what happens. See what comes out. We're just there for the thrill. 
when Jesus saw the people come running together, <laughs> he rebuked the unclean, the demonic spirit, and he, here's what he said to it. Hey, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. He didn't come up here and he didn't run about three or four laps, fall down, water in the dirt himself. Okay? He spoke with the authority of the Father because he had the authority of the Father in him. You and I have the same authority. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in you and me. Does everybody say same spirit? Same spirit that has life-giving over death power lives in every born-again believer. But you know what you got to do to believe that? You got to have faith. Real faith, not emotional faith. Now watch this. I love this last part, and I ain't got time to go into real details of it, maybe later. Verse 26. Then the spirit, that demonic spirit, cried out, convulsed that little feller greatly again, but it did come out of him, and he became as one dead. So many around said, see, he's dead. Pay attention. Anytime you go to winning against the enemy, he's going to disguise his defeat. You better get a hold of that. Anytime you go to actually walking in the power of God and it's working against the enemy, the enemy will disguise himself that he's not really defeated. He'll, so what did he want to do? He didn't want to get the thing off, oh, this boy's been set free and the power of God stronger than the power of Satan. No, he had the boy almost look dead. And some people say the boy was dead. And now what do you think the crowd's going to do? Don't bring nobody to Jesus in bad shape because he'll kill them. Don't come to the church, they'll kill you. And some churches will. In all honesty, they'll kill your faith. They'll kill your anointing because they can't walk in it themselves. They don't want you to walk in it. Just plain as it gets this morning. This may be just a little too rough for some of y'all, but that's okay. Time you grow up and get off the milk and get on some meat. Hallelujah. Hope you got your dentures glued in today. And you better bring them glued in the next two weeks too. Hallelujah. Sharpen them up a little bit. Get a file where you can chew on this meat. Amen. So it looked as if the boy was dead. Watch verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. It come out of the gate at Jesus like, ah! Then when Jesus didn't back down, stayed in faith, commanded it the word of God, it went, ah! And tried to act like it's dead. But Jesus took the life of the boy and raised him up. I hope you're getting this today. This is, this is another, thus saith the Lord. And I, I, this will be in a note, but you may want to go ahead and write it down now. It's going to be a little lengthy, and I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to add to or take away from what I know, thus saith the Lord, when I was praying. But this, is a, this is a word to this church and the church, listening wherever you're at. You had better get you some real Christian faith based on the Word of God because Christian emotions will fail you in times of trouble. If all you operate in is religious Christianity, speaking Christianese, emotional faith, then your emotions are not going to stand up to what's coming. It ain't even stood up to what's here. One third of the church cannot stand up to what's even here now. And it ain't even that bad. And again, I'm not trying to make light. I got friends that's got it. I know people that's died of it, okay? I'm not making light of it. It is real. But so is the regular flu. So is car wrecks. So is heart attacks. So is cancer. So is... We live in a fallen world, but we're not supposed to fall with it. Maybe I need to say that again. Dear God, that was pretty good. That wasn't even planned. We live in a fallen world, but we were not created by our God, filled with his spirit to fall with the world. We're here to stand the world back up on Jesus. Are you with me, church? Amen? And let's, now, you can write this one down real quick. Real faith is not based on emotions. Let me say it again. Real faith is never, ever based on your emotions. Because if you, again, let me say it again. I don't have a power print on this. If all you ever go off of is your emotions, man, your faith is just going to be tossed like the Bible says, to and fro, like a wave tossed by the sea. One minute you're going to be up. The next minute you're going to be down. The next minute you're going to be praising him. The next minute you're going to be cussing him. My Bible says bitter and sweet water can't come out of the same mouth. So make up your mind what you want your mouth to do and stick with one. Come on, Ronnie. 
And it all goes back to what we've been learning here on Wednesday nights. I'm telling you, dear God, if you've missed Wednesday nights, you have missed some powerful teachings about honor. And it ain't so much about honoring the person itself. It's about honoring what that person represents. From parents to police officers to preachers to, to teachers. Come on. To presidents. Spouses, yes, yeah, spouses. And when you start getting a familiar spirit with those around you, you've just walked into all kind of emotional faith. And you know who the loser is? The loser's not really the one you dishonor. The biggest loser in that crowd is you because you stop receiving from the anointed of God. But I want to leave you with good news. <laughs> some of y'all going, I got it's about time. Can I leave you with some words of Jesus? Say, yeah, because you're going to get it anyway. I want you to stand as I read this word because it is such an, all the word of God. But I love this verse. It's found in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, and it is the words of Jesus speaking himself. He says, these things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have, everybody say, peace. Peace, he says, says this. Jesus says, in, in the world you will have tribulations. You will have demonic attacks. You will have pandemics. You will have what the Bible says, pestilence. You will have famines. You will have earthquakes. You will have natural disasters. You will have tsunamis. You're going to have all these things. You're going, get, you're going to get sick. There's diseases in the earth. All these things are in the earth, church. Every one of them. That's what's called tribulation. And he says, I want you to know, in this world, you will have tribulation, but my church, my true believers, not operating with emotional faith, I want you to be a good cheer, even when the tsunami comes, even when the pandemic comes, even when the bad report comes, even when you don't get your pay like you like it, be of good cheer, because you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I've already overcome the world. I've overcome it. I've overcome that pandemic. I've overcome cancer. I've overcome diabetes. I've overcome lungs. I've overcome your mind. I've already overcome it. But for you to walk in it, you've got to quit having emotional faith. And you've got to start saying, I don't care what my eyes see. I don't care what my ears hear. I don't care what my flesh tingles and feels. I believe the Word of God over all of it. Now, people will call you stupid. People will call you a fanatic. People will call you a holy roller. And when they say that to me, I say, thank you for noticing. Thank you for noticing. If me being a freak, if me being a holy roller, if me being a fanatic keeps me walking in health and healed and prospering and doing good and getting up with the joy of the Lord right in the middle of a pandemic every day, then let it be, Lord. Because it's just words of other people, and I only want your word, God. The words of other people can't, can't affect you. Because you're going to come in agreement with somebody's word. Do you hear me? You're going to come in agreement with somebody's word. Too many people come into agreement with the doctor's word. Too many people, way, let's do me down, I'm fixing to let you go. Way too many people are coming in agreement with the news anchor word. I'm talking Christians. And as I've sat back and I've watched this transpire since the first of the year, and I hadn't been shocked by much, to be honest with you. There's very little that has shocked me over the course of the last 20 years. <laughs> I've been in a room with demons. I've cast out demons a few times here and there. Ain't no big deal. Why don't you tell us about it? Because it, to be honest with you, ain't that big of a deal. It's not that glamorous. You just, just like Jesus, you say, go. I was in Guatemala. I'll tell you this real, real quick. Y'all got time for this? Because you're going to get it anyway. Say, yeah. In Guatemala, probably about 300 people in the, in the service that night. Pastor Ron Phillips was preaching out of Abba's house up in there. He's retired now from Ch Tennessee. We were there. And the other pastors that was with us, when it come time for the altar, <laughs> What's weird there, you get very few people to come to an altar in America, but when you have an altar call over there, I would say 95, sometimes 100% of them all come for prayer. So your prayer service really can last. The last one I was in by myself, I prayed four and a half hours after the service for everyone in the crowd. 
four and a half hours later, I finished praying. Whew. I was wore out and energized at the same time. But anyway, we had a young couple that, that was just had come on a mission trip with us, and they were praying for this lady, and, and, and she was, you know, doing this kind of convulsion thing going forward, and they came over, and I was out, and it wasn't, there was other great men of God, anointed men, but I was the closest one to them, and they said, hey, can you come over? We're, we're struggling with this one. <laughs> and I was just doing that stuff, you know, and again, I've seen enough poltergeist that didn't impress me. So I just walk over there, and how many of y'all know I don't speak English hardly? And I sure don't speak no Spanish. But I'd learned one word, and I probably butchered it, to be honest with you, I probably would. But I learned how to say fire. It's fuego, or something close to that. That may be the redneck version, but fuego is what I was using. And I remember I started to go over there and started, I started just, to, man, I'm going to go in there and just, I'm going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in tongues and lay hands on. And the guy said, just, you just walk over, make her head look up and look you in the eyes and just speak my fire into her life. I walk up and I go over there and I lift her head up to mine and I make eye contact and I smiled at her. She's kind of doing that thing, you know. But I smiled at her and I seen peace coming in my eyes. And when I seen peace come in those eyes, I said, Frago. I didn't go, Frago. Now, I done it for another one over there, but I did this one. It's just, it was just, Frago. You know what she done? She went, Puked. Threw that thing up. Now, y'all don't know me. Some of y'all don't know me. I am a sympathy puker. Look here, I can wade through blood and guts. It don't bother me. But throw up and diarrhea, woo! Now, there were a lot of eyes on what was going on because of what was going on on me. And I was fast enough when I seen her start to do that, I jumped back, but some of it hit my shoe. And I'm going, don't look, don't look. Breathe through, you know. Now again, not everybody's looking, but there's a whole lot of people now watching to see what man of God's fixing to do, and I'm fixing to throw up. I feel it. I feel my gag reflex is kicking in, and, I, and here's what came to my mind. And I know it was selfish, very selfish. I was thinking about me. God, I don't want to misrepresent you because if I start throwing up, they gonna think I got a demon. So I turn and I'm like, just don't look down, flow. Just act like you're praising. I wasn't praising. I was just acting like it. I'm just like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do, Lord? Oh God, don't throw up. Don't throw up in the name of Jesus. Don't throw up. I bind the, I bind the spirit to throw up. But this stuff is on my shoe, Lord. And they'd set up a little stage for us and it had a curtain on the front. And the curtain went down in the floor about four or five inches. I just stuck my foot into the curtain, pulled that curtain over and started wiping that puke on that curtain. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Look down, it was gone, I like I got this. She threw up, got delivered. Let me show you how the spirit of wisdom works. I went over to another lady. It was all women demon possessed that night. I don't know ladies what that says about you, but there was another woman. <laughs> just kidding but it was another woman and she was doing similarly the same thing and I began to pray with her and I laid hands on her right here and I had her by the head and I, 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 I recognized ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I let go I go behind her <laughs> come on Jesus Franco Blah. I walk off I, just, I, I didn't even see it I heard it I don't know what that got to do with anything, but anyway. But you're going you're gonna to follow somebody's word. You're going to follow CNN or Fox or newscasts, or you're going to follow aunt and uncle's word. And I love, I don't mind having other, other avenues, but nothing is to come before the faith of the word of God. And we are dealing with demonic realms, y'all. And if you don't know how to do spiritual warfare, then you need to go home right now and start studying on spiritual warfare. Because whether or not you realize it, you're in it. And you're in it to win it with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I love you this morning. I want you to know I love you beyond measure. And I will not back down from what I preach today. And I don't want you to back down. I don't want us to become that apathy, lethargic church that just keeps going through a routine. Guys, Christ is not a routine. He is power and anointing every day of your life. And I'm going to be preaching some more on that <laughs> next Sunday. So I hope you invite somebody to come with you. There's so much more we can do to be getting the gospel out that we're just flat not doing because of apathy. Invite someone to come with you next week. Invite somebody to watch. Do a watch party. 
There's tons of ways to get the word out. Amen? But if you're here today and you don't have Jesus and you've never walked in real faith, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying, what did you really get? Because if all you got was a religion, my friend, religion will send you to hell quicker than anything. I'm talking about, do you have an authentic relationship with the power of God, not just the, the image of God? Have you surrendered your life, your faith, your emotions? Have you surrendered them to the power of the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Doesn't mean you ain't tempted. It just means when you're tempted, you go to the Word before you go to anything else. Amen? So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads real quickly. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, never accepted Him, never surrendered your life to Him, today's your day. We're not asking you to join the church. We're not asking you to join religion. We're asking you to surrender your life to a Lord that loves you so much He'd send His own Son to die in your place. And He already knew the message you made, but He loves you still. And He wants you to come be a part of His life and His family. And if that's you today and you've never accepted him, just lift your hand right where you're at. If you've done it at home, wherever you're doing it at, just do it. Please let us know. All right, if you would sit here today, and if you've got the guts to be brave enough to tell the truth to God today, not me, but would you say with me, and I, and I have to raise my hand on this some too. I've, I've, I know what it's right. I know when the, when the Holy Ghost spoke emotional faith, I'm like, my God, I've had that. Dear God, I've been all up in that. In the past, I mean, I hadn't been real... I ain't going to say I've walked it out perfect the last 10 years, but the last 10 years of my life have been more faithful than any. I'm sure I've failed. But I know what emotional faith is like because I've walked it. Conditional, emotional Christian faith. I was still a Christian. Still a Christian. But man, my faith wasn't solid. Any little thing. So if that's you, if you be like me, I don't I mean, maybe don't be like me. Just get real. Can you lift your hand and say, yeah, Pastor, I've been there. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Just lift your hand up without any shame. I mean, there's no shame in that game. Want, recognizing where you're at with some stuff, man, and saying, Lord, yes. <laughs> because you know what? When you raise your hand and acknowledge it, the Lord will say, yeah, I know. I already know that. You can go ahead and put it down now. I already knew that about you. But I had you appointed to be here on the 25th of October in 2020 at a little old place up here on the top of a mountain called Eva where you could hear a word that would release an anointing that would destroy your emotional faith and enter into you a faith based on the pure, devout power of the Word of God. But he'd say to you today, dear children, listen to me now. You're going to have to know the Word to have word faith. You're going to have to build yourself up in the Word of God. So apply yourself to the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Sing the Word of God. Enter into a new dimension of your knowledge and wisdom and praise and honor of the Word of God. Because that's up to you. Whether you operate in what faith you operate. He can't make you. I haven't arrived, but I ain't where I used to be, and I thank God for that. And I'm going forward in the name of Jesus. All right, Father, we've been a little longer today. <laughs> Seems like the last couple of weeks we've been in overtime. But, but Father, it's amazing to me that if a game, if a football game's going to overtime, everybody talks about how good the overtime was. And they have no problem staying that little extra time with a ball game. And oh, they're on the edge of their seat. Hallelujah. So Lord, I don't apologize for taking just a little more time today to expose the side effect of the satanic realm of this COVID-19 besides the physical, the spiritual apathy and laziness and, and exposing the faith that many people, many good-hearted Christians have of the emotional faith. It's been exposed, and by the power of God, it will be dealt with in your life if you call on Jesus. And I bless you with that today. In this world, there will be tribulations, son and daughters, but I want you to be a good cheer of good faith. Christ has overcome all of it, and you win no matter what in Jesus' name. Can we give him one big ovation of praise up in this house? Come on, hallelujah. Can, you, can your voice say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen.